Okay. So I think we're live here. It is nine o'clock, actually nine o one, and uh, we are live on YouTube. So let's get organized here. I'm trying this on my webcam uh, tonight. I'm realizing that the webcam probably isn't the best option because it looks really blurry. So we'll see what we can do and uh, next week maybe I'll have an even better camera. I thought this would be the best solution but it seems a little bit blurry so we'll see what goes on and hopefully people will stop uh, start uh, hopping on the live stream. I believe it's public and let me just check all our settings. If you're new to my channel it's Heather Boyd Wire and every week I do a live stream and uh, troubleshoot different ideas for different things. There we go. Here's Sharon. Yay! Hey Sharon, how are you? Good. So I'm going to just pull this back and you can see from the screen that it's a little bit uh, blurry. Uh, I also have a delay so I think I'm not even going to look much at the screen because there is a delay. I've sort of mapped out the area on my table where I'll be working. It's a very small workspace. So I'll start by showing you guys some pictures of what we're going to try to do today. And as always, I'll try my best to um, uh, look at the comments and answer comments. But uh, no problem if you guys um, if you guys just want to chat amongst yourselves. I love it when you guys do that and it kind of takes the pressure off me too because that way I could just work on the projects and I'll try to occasionally hop up and, and look at the comments. Uh, so Sharon says she's good. How are you? I feel good. Yeah, the picture in picture is different, eh? So I'm giving it a shot. Uh, next week I think it will be 100% good. This week I thought the webcam would be good. It's a little bit blurry, but we'll just see what we can do and hopefully uh, you guys can see. Maybe if I bring, see I can't even really see what you see on screen because it's uh, there's a little bit of a delay which is unfortunate, but I have some sketches of what I wanted to do. Yeah, I see. Okay, now there's a delay. It's coming up to the screen and they're not super clear. So I'll just put it back down. And so I've done some different uh, sketches for ideas of things to do with feathers. And so I think what I'm going to do is just start by doing a basic feather wrap so you guys can get an idea of what we're doing. And Robin's hopping on. Hey Robin, how are you? We're, we're doing all kinds of feather jewelry today. So I think I'm not going to look too much at my screen. I'm just going to scroll up so I can see the comments which is good and I've mapped up the area where I'm working so hopefully you'll be able to see things okay and what I'm going to do to start I also realized I didn't have the best selection of feathers so I'm going to work with what I have as usual and to start with I think all we're going to do is do a basic wrap and I think the best wire to use for the basic wrap would be a 22 gauge wire 20 is a little thick so let's go ahead with the 22 gauge wire or 24 would be okay too but it's a little soft so I'm just going to get a piece of the wire and just going to pull it out. This is some wire I bought at uh, Michael's so it's mystery wire and I have a friend Mr. Fly that seems to live down here unless it's a different fly every week but he seems to live in my basement and he likes me and he likes the lights so he's going to be an honor live stream as well which is kind of funny so Sharon says I'm using my phone so it's smaller anyways but it's a little blurry okay the writing is blurrier than the pictures okay well that's yeah also hopefully this is going to work out okay and as always if there's ever a design that you guys want me to do a full tutorial for I certainly can do that as well so just to start with the basic uh, feather design I did make some of these a few years ago for my stepdaughter. I remember she wanted some feather earrings and I was looking for a picture of them and I couldn't find them. So we'll just go with what we have here. And I think what I did was I just put a piece of wire. It's not very long. It's about um, maybe six inches long. And I'm going to keep a little end sticking out the top. And then I'm going to hold it snugly. And like I said, this is a large feather, so you probably want to use a smaller one for an earring. But some people like large earrings. And so you want to start the wrap a little bit below where the fluff is, because that will help hold it in place. So we bend it a bit at a right angle, and then just do a full turn around. And if, um, if the wire is thin, like 20, 
24 maximum uh, 22 it's going to wrap well if it's a 20 gauge wire it's going to be too thick and it might actually break the um, the feathers so we're just going to wrap back up we're, we're actually started down here and we're working our way back up up here like that and we're just going to go right to the tip of the feather if that little tip of the feather is too long you can actually trim it so we're just going to go like that but this is a ba a good basic way to wrap the uh, feather and so you see it's very secure it's not coming out you don't need any glue at all and you don't need to buy the little spring ends although you could in theory put a little bead um, like an end cap on there instead of winding the wire but because this is uh, the wire lady TV I'm gonna try to do what I can with wire oh and Leanne's hopping on I want to experiment with making earrings awesome so many beautiful feathers on eBay that's true yes and here's cat online too hey cat how you doing so yeah I um, I should have got a more a bigger variety of feathers but I'm just gonna work with what I have here so I've wrapped the feather and then just to do a basic design we could just grab some beads I have a, a nice little variety I'll show you my beads here so I have a nice little variety of beads that I can choose from. I was hoping to find turquoise. So here's a little turquoise one. I'll put a turquoise bead on there. And then these little four millimeter beads are called miracle beads. And I think a lot of you guys know these are one of my favorite beads. So I'm gonna keep it simple and just put a couple of beads on there. And then just what you would do for the earring is just bend that at a right angle. And then just hold this like that with your round pliers and then just bend the end around a couple of times and this would be good for an earring or you could put it on a pendant and what I'll do is for the first one I'll just put it on a little earring hook I just have to find my hooks I think I did bring some down I thought I brought some down oh yeah here they go so I'll just put that one on a little earring hook and so I just buy these hooks already made and we'll just open it up. It's cool eh Sharon? Sharon said it looks gorgeous. Thank you so much. It's it's very simple, uh, very easy to do and you don't, like I said, you don't really need to wrap it with them um, or put glue on it or anything. So here is the finished earring. Super simple and you could actually put a couple of feathers together. So I'm going to show you now how to do the um, if you want to put two together to put on a pendant because I thought I would do that one next do a little pendant so we have our earring I'll put it at the side wow our first thing was fast to do that's awesome so now I, I'm going to do this one in gold color I'm going to make it a little more kind of uh, rustic and natural looking so same thing this is about a 24 gauge wire you don't want to go too uh, thick because it's going to um, it'll damage the feathers now these little feathers are a little more delicate I have these, I just had these, I don't know where I got them, I had a little mixed bag of natural feathers. So we're going to just put them together like that. And and Ed said, I didn't get a notification, I'll have to catch, oh, okay, oh that's too bad. Yeah, if you hit the notification bell on my channel, it's supposed to let you guys know when I go live. And um, I always try to post it in the um, Facebook group too, in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. And unless I say otherwise, uh, it's always going to be Wednesday at 9 o'clock. So, so see what I've done is I put two little feathers together. These ones are, are a little more delicate. And you could kind of like just stack one on top of the other like that. And then the same idea. You're going to leave a little bit of wire at the top, a couple inches. And then hold it all together. And just hold the top of the feathers and the wire together with your thumb and forefinger. And then start winding it around. Uh, I had an extra one. I think I had an extra one in there. I don't know how that happened. Okay, so we're going to wind it around a couple of times. Like that. Just to catch the top of the feathers in here. And hopefully these aren't too delicate, but they're going to snap. I'm going to do my best for this because these ones are quite delicate. So we're just going to wind these around and then just keep winding them up until you get to the top of the feather and then clip it off like that 
and this one, these ones are really shedding a lot. I think these ones are a little bit older. And then what I'm going to do is actually bend this one perpendicular because I am going to attach it to a pendant after. So what I'm going to do for now, rather than finish the circle, I'm just going to do a few like this. Um, okay, so, oh, so Andrea says mine didn't sound also for the notification. Well, that's really odd. I'm going to have to check that out and see. Very, very strange. But like I said, just assume I'm going to go on at 9 at, um, on Wednesdays. And then if, I, if I'm going to do otherwise, I'll definitely post it in the, um, in the Facebook group. So these, these ones, I think these are really natural feathers. They've got little bits and pieces in them as well. So if you go collecting feathers in the forest, they're going to be something like this with little, little specks on them. So the same thing, we're going to put two feathers together. I'm going to leave about a couple of inches at the top. And then just wind this around. And the more you do, the faster it's going to get. And the idea is you want to just wind it a little bit where the fluffy starts. So you can kind of catch the fluff in the feather or in the wire so it won't slide off. You don't want the wire to slide off. So here's another one. So we've got uh, that one. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bend it perpendicular and just bend that down so we've got two going and I like a nice uneven number so let's do one more and just try to keep checking the comments so we've got uh, Rosa's hopping on and Linda my notified me and I was finally not busy yay that's awesome that's great I'm glad when you guys can hop on and if you have any feedback and stuff I hope I won't miss your comments they're not they don't come up too quickly so I should be able to handle it and so this is going to be the last one. We're putting two feathers together. And same thing. You put a couple inches at the top like this and wind them together. Okay. These ones I'm actually not putting beads at the top. Uh, for the turquoise one, I did put the beads at the top. But for this, you certainly could also add beads if you wanted to for the pendant. I just kind of forgot, actually. But I totally could have put some beads at the top. And then we're going to bend it perpendicular again and then down like this. So now we have three feathers set up to go on a kind of a pendant thing. So let's do a kind of a pendant thing now. So I have thicker wire for the pendant which is about a 20 gauge wire. You could go as thick as like 18 I guess if you wanted a like a really solid kind of a base. And I did a little sketch for this so I'm kind of going with this idea here where you have like sort of a circular thing with beads on it and actually this one had beads underneath but that's okay I'm just going to do it like this for now so to make a round pendant we're just going to bend this kind of at a right angle like that and then make the circle with a round form this is uh, my ring form and uh, I use this just to make round shapes like for the rings, but you could also use a pill bottle or something else. And what I realized was these ones, I actually don't, I can finish the loop right away. So let's go ahead. I'm going to backpedal a little bit. You guys know me well. I always like to backpedal. So, and I decided I want to put a bead on there too. So let's just straighten that wire up. We always have the prerogative to change our mind. It's all good. So I could put like a natural bead, but that one's a little dark. That's a tiger eye bead. So let me just see what other kind of bead would be nice on there. I don't know if I brought any other colors of beads. So let me just see what I have. I'm a little limited with what I have, but maybe some green or purple even. Purple's kind of nice. Ooh, let's do purple. Okay, I just have to find three purple beads that are more or less the same. You guys are probably hearing this. All my beads go uh, ticka, 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 ticka. So there we go. So here's a few purple beads. Let's see, they're more or less, they kind of match, more or less. Okay, so here's, let's put a purple bead on there. I just want to make it a little more fancy because I realized we, I should have put beads on to begin with. So let's just put one on there, okay? So we'll go ahead, put the bead on, uh, do this, put this perpendicular, make a nice big round circle, and then bend the wire around and clip it. So now we have 
This could actually be an earring, but it's actually going to go on a pendant. So let's do the same with these. I'm going to back pedal a little bit, open it up, put the bead on there. Oh, we've got some cam uh, uh, comments coming on. Okay, love this idea. Love feather jewelry. Yeah, we're ha this is going to be, they're going to do some cool stuff. And I'm going to try to make some feathers after. Oh, Sharon had a great idea. I have to back pedal. Remember the feathers in your hair? Oh, that would be cool. Yes, feathers in your hair. That's true. That's a great idea, Sharon. Yeah, I love that idea. Really fun. You could just put like a little clip in your hair, like maybe attach it to a little, um, they have those little snappy clips that, that uh, you can put in your hair. And Deb says, Heather, love the new layout with me on the second screen. Thanks, Deb. Thanks so much. I'm really experimenting with it. And next week, what I'm going to do is um, I'll have a better camera because I thought the webcam cam would be a good option, but I'm seeing that it's not the clearest um, sort of image. So last week, I used my iPod, and it was a bit of a giant fail. Even though the screen was clear, there was a little yellow box on the screen. I don't know if you guys noticed, but if you watched the replay, you could see there was like a little yellow box uh, on the screen through the whole recording and it was like the little focus box and I didn't realize it showed up on the recording so that was a little silly. So uh, so here's some, we've got our three feathers all uh, set up so I noticed the little that beads a little smaller so let's put that one in the middle. So now the idea would be to take your pendant uh, wire and then we can just string a few beads on there and um, and these are going to be kind of in between. So let's just see what we have. I can't believe I didn't bring my big pot of beads down here, but hey, we're just going to have to go with what we have, right? So let me try to use some different colors. Let's see what I have. I have these hematite beads that are really nice. I don't know if you guys ever use um, hematite. It's one of my favorite beads. It's like a metallic, uh, metallic gray, I guess you would call it. So let's make sure I have three of them. Uh, actually, I'll need one, two, three, four, five, I guess, if I'm going to do that, unless I alternate with other beads. Oh, I think I have five. Ah, it's my lucky day. So let's put on one of those, and then we're going to put the, the feather, make sure they're all going the same direction, and then we'll put another one, and let's see if that's going to be maybe not the best color combination, but it gives you guys an idea. And then we're going to put another one. So we're just stringing these on. The wire is already bent sort of like in a round way. So it looks, uh, it looks pretty good. So, so that's interesting. I think I maybe would want, well, I don't know. I could maybe put a little more space between the feathers. So let's pull it back a little bit and see if we can put just a little more space in between the feathers and see what happens. So let me try to get some other little beads. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Maybe in the seed beads. Sometimes it's a little hard for me to see the colors. Uh, or these little hematite beads. Let's try it. maybe these. It just what, We're gonna have to see what's actually going to fit on the, no, those might not fit. How about I don't know if green, green's kind of random, but it might, might look okay. Let's try green. Green and purple isn't bad together. So let's do green and then this, and let's just see if these are going to fit and not go through the green. Yeah, should be okay. So let's try this. And even if the colors aren't perfect, see, this is what takes the longest time is deciding on your colors and stuff. So if we go like this, uh, mm, yeah, not sure. So let me just alternate like this. Yeah, you could just spend hours deciding on your colors. Okay, I'm going to try it like this and see how it looks. And even if it's not perfect, it's all good. So we go with that one and then another green one. Oops, that one. Some, sometimes the beads have little bits of glitches in them, so that, that one actually, the hole didn't work at all. And then this one, yeah, and make sure the feathers are all going the same way. And then this one, and then let's put one more green one and see how it looks. Okay, Sharon says, I love hematite. 
Yes, it's true. Actually, um, Sharon, it, it helps take negative energy away. It's very healing, the, the especially the magnetic hematite. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so these are... I didn't go very symmetrical with this, but this gives you a little idea of how it looks. I'm really not... I'm really not loving this color combination. Anyways, I think what I will do is... I could just leave it like that. It gives you a little idea of, of how it's how it's going to look. And so what you would do after that is... Maybe I'll put one more bead on there. I'm a little confused about what I'm doing. That's okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it like that. Just to give you guys an idea, I'm going to just close the close the top here and we're just going to twist it around. I might later, I might change the beads or something just, uh, just to show you guys a different combination. And so you could even put a little crimp on either side as well. That would work as well. And then to make the pendant, you would just do a little loop at the top. Okay, like that. And there you go. So I, I probably will actually change the beads. I'm not loving the combination, but this gives you an idea. And like I said, you could put a little crimp on either side to hold it in place. And they're really not symmetrical because I have an extra random bead there, which is strange, but it's all good. So that's just to show you guys how that works. So there's our second one. And then the third one I wanted to try and I really don't know if it's going to work, was to make a feather out of fabric. Now, I wasn't sure which fabric to use because I have this cotton fabric, and what you would need is a fabric that actually frays like that. And this is a fab, this piece in particular was a piece that I painted many, many years ago. So this one's kind of special. Maybe I'll work with this one. And the idea was to get like a little head pin, or you could just use a wire if you wanted. This one might or might not work. So what I'm going to do is actually cut it on an angle so it, it's sharp. In fact, it might be good to even file it a little bit because there's probably a little pokey end on there. But let's just try it. Okay, Let's try to get that pokey end. And then the idea would be to kind of thread it through the fabric. So just poke it in and then this is very experimental. I was even thinking to do it with burlap, but it might, it might, um, uh, how do you say, uh, fray too much. So all I'm doing is I'm poking it back and forth in the fabric. And like I said, this is very, very experimental. I actually saw another really cute tutorial online on how to make feathers with embroidery floss. I'll actually link them up below the video. Um, because I've seen people make feathers with embroidery floss and then they put liquid starch on them to um, uh, to uh, stiffen them up type of thing. So I'll show you guys a little bit the idea of doing that too. So what I've done is I've just gone ahead and put this on here and then I would like straighten it out a little bit. Like I would pull this, hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing, and pull this right down to the bottom. I like this idea of a mixed media thing. And then it's going to hold in place because the um, there's a little knobby on the head pin. Uh, so, ooh, we've got some comments in here. So, Deb says, hey, yay, Heather, I don't have features, so these ideas are great. Okay, there we go. So, so here we we're going to um, we're going to just take this and to make the feather shape. This should be interesting. Very experimental. I'm going to just cut it across the bottom like that. Okay, so this kind of lines up at the bottom. And then the idea is you kind of cut a feather shape. Okay, so I'm not even sure the best way to do this. And like I said, this might or might not work. It might look more like a leaf. So we're going to do, but I do love the idea of mixed media. I used to do a lot of things with fabric. So I've just... I've just threaded that through. I've um, and what I'm going to do is make a loop at the top right away. So I'm going to cut this flush at the top, and then I'm going to take this and bend it back. I don't know if you guys can see. I'll put it on a right angle, and then make a loop. So right away, 
right away we have a loop at the top so you're not going to lose your fabric and um, you have something to hang it on. So my idea, we'll see if it's going to work or not because I never know. So let's, uh, oh I forgot to bring a pin down as well. There's always stuff I forget to bring down but what I'm going to do now is I'll just use the tip of the earring uh, earring hook and so I don't know if you guys do any sewing or anything like that but the idea was to take this and one by one fray the little edges away so definitely for this project you need to use a woven fabric not a knitted fabric and um, cotton would probably your, be your best bet because I'm not sure how polyester really works and this is actually just a, a, it was like a white cotton sheet. And what I did was uh, many years ago, actually when I lived in Toronto, uh, when I first graduated from school, I had a, this old sheet and I just painted it with acrylic. So I've had this for probably 30 years. And gradually over the years, I've been using this, um, the fabric to do different things so I don't know if you guys can see very well but it's actually super cool it's really like coming like starting to look like a feather because of all the little all the little um the little phrase type of that that type of thing in fact I don't even think I'm going to try to make the embroidery uh floss one because it's um I don't have the starch and I don't think it would work so well but this is working quite well um you don't want to if your painting fabric you don't want to glob it on uh, glob on the paint too much because it's going to um, you won't be able to fray it because I'm seeing where the paint is a little bit thicker it's very hard to fray but it's really kind of looking cool and even if it doesn't 100% look like a feather it's super interesting so we'll just try to pull this these um, vertical uh, fibers out as much as we can. So what's going to be left are the horizontal uh, fibers in the weave and so that will be the basis of the feather. So we'll just keep like pulling these ones out because I would like you to see how it's going to look and I never done this before. I didn't see this online. I don't know where the idea came from. But I guess it was sort of inspired by the um, embroidery floss ones. So, so definitely I'll link those ones up below. If you find, like as you get towards the center, it starts to come about apart a little bit. I imagine you can even put a little bit of glue or something on there as well. So I'm not going to fray it right to the center. Because if I fray it right to the center, um, it probably will come apart. So I'm going to leave about, say, an eighth of an inch on either side of the head pin so at least we'll have a little and it'll be like the little uh, the little center part of the feather like the little stem part of the feather so let's just try to at least get it uh, frayed right to like an eighth and an eighth of an inch within the head pin yeah and I can see at the bottom I've got a bit of a glob of paint so it's not fraying so well in the middle so when you if you do decide to paint your own fabric uh, definitely um, uh, don't put too much a thick coat of acrylic paint. If you use acrylic paint, just water it down. Or you can use fabric paints and that should, shouldn't be too, too globby. Yeah, down at the bottom I see I have a really big glob of paint. So I'm not sure if that's going to uh, fray at all. Probably if I had a pin it would be easier to do. But uh, I'm just going to dig into it a little bit more to break it up a bit because it uh, it is a little globby down there so so there we go and uh, yeah I'd be really curious if you guys like doing mixed media stuff if you make one of these feathers I would love to see it because it's kind of funky and I'm gonna try some more with other fabrics too so so here we go and you see how it comes down a little bit at the top I bet you could just like put a little glob of crazy glue or something at the top to hold it in place and then so I don't know if you could see the detail, but it's really, really cool. You used just acrylic paint. Yes, uh, Sharon, I used acrylic um, paint for the original um, sheet. And so here, actually, you guys can see the sheet that I painted. 
and some of the areas the paint is way too thick it would not uh, work very well but I just cut a piece in the area where the paint was thin so here we have like a little um, fabric uh, feather and if you want to even bend it a little so it's a little on a curve to make it look more natural you just like hold it in your thumb and finger and you can do like a little a little curve shape for the feather and then if you also wanted to trim it you could trim it a little bit narrower as well so there is our number three feather so that one's kind of cool and so for the last feather, what I want to do is actually try to do something called embossing. So I don't know if you guys have ever done embossing. I do have a video that um, I did quite a while ago that was like a kid's type of video uh, on how to do an embossed, uh, I think it was a robot or something. So I'm going to link that up below. This embossing foil, it's thicker than tin foil. You can actually buy it at a um, art store. The other thing I have is this metal tape, which you can get at a hardware store. So I thought I would also try that one as well. In fact, maybe I'll try this one first because it's a material that's a little more accessible. And what I'll do is I just need this. I'm going to take this out just to have a, I'll just put it to an empty page. This is just to have a little soft area to work with. And so now what I want to do is we, we will need a little centerpiece. Uh, to hang the feather with so maybe what I'll do is just get a piece of wire I think I'll do go ahead and do the 20 gauge wire so let me cut a little piece of the 20 gauge wire and that will be because we do need a center like um, stem type thing I don't know what you what do you call the middle of a feather I'm not too sure but we definitely need that to uh, make it a little more stable so Let's try this. So if we put, open up the tape. Okay, we're just going to open up. It's very sticky. So we'll just open it up. And then what I would do is just put the wire kind of in the middle like that. Actually, it won't be, you don't want it in the middle. You want it a little to one side because then we're going to fold it back. So let's fold it back over itself. And then there we have this metal tape over the foil. So now I actually have one of these. This is an embossing uh, stick type of thing. I don't know if anybody's ever done embossing in scrapbooking, but they have these little embossing tools type of thing. But you don't you don't want to break the um, you don't want to rip the the foil. So you want to just be very gentle, very careful. We're going to go like this, just to get it sort of sticking out on both sides. And then what you could do is to make your feather, you could either cut that flush, because sometimes feathers don't have much of an end on them, or you can just cut it and maybe even file it a little bit. And then you want to do your, um, your little end at the top that would go on, I guess, an earring or something. Or why don't we just go ahead and leave it... Um, uh, like we did with the other one so we could put a bead on top let's try that let's just go for that so there we go so we have that and then I think what I'm going to do is before should I do it before or after I cut it I think I have to do it yeah I have to do this before I cut it and so let's just go ahead and if we have this soft area like that oh Sharon says I use them for nail art acrylic paint you use okay no very cool idea I was just saying I could use raw fleece to make a feather okay cool very nice so let's just go ahead and with this we're just going to do some nice lines like this and don't worry you know if it's not perfect length we're just going to kind of make it look feather like like this so we're going to go like that you could get a picture of a feather to kind of have an idea of what feathers look like. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do at the top here, but I'm just going to go like this for now. And just like, yeah, I think this side is working out a little better. So we have it looking a little bit like a feather. I actually think I'm going to stick with the metal uh, tape because I think if we use the embossing foil, well, it might work. We might have to just poke a hole in it or something. 
So let's go ahead and cut this. Oh, this is very cool. Wow, I like this. So we're just gonna go ahead and it might actually be easier to cut with an X-Acto knife, but because I didn't bring an X-Acto knife downstairs, we're just gonna go with this. Okay, so we're gonna go, and then you wanna get it up in like some kind of point thing. And because I don't have the knife, we're just gonna do it with the scissors. So, and it, keep in mind, it is a little, um, a little soft. It's a little, like, it's not like hard metal type of thing. So it is a little soft type of thing, but it's pretty darn beautiful. I'm liking this. <laughs> so, oh, the embossing tool you use for uh, nail art. That is so cool. So let's put a couple of beads at the top of this. Let's see what we have. I have maybe a little, well, I even have this little heart bead that's kind of cool but I don't want it the bead to be too big so let's see what I have I have some nice little shiny faceted beads maybe I could use those this one's kind of fun so we'll put a little faceted bead on the top like that and then maybe well we already used one of those little uh, uh, what do you call them the um, miracle beads so maybe we'll use a different one we have like, this little round bead you can get that on here. There we go. We'll put a little round bead on there like that. And then maybe I'll just go ahead and do the little loop at the top. So we're just going to bend that to the left. And then we're going to bend this around like that and wind it around. Okay. And clip it. So this is very cool. I like this one with the embossed. Oh, Linda's heading off. Oh, night, Linda. Thanks, thanks so much for uh, hopping on, and I'll uh, I'll definitely post the results on the in the Facebook page so you guys can see how everything turned out. So yeah, so this was the embossed tape, and now let's just try one with the embossing um, foil here. So I'm just gonna see this one is maybe a little bit thicker, and like I said, this one you could buy at the art store. So maybe what we should do for that is actually kind of draw a feather. Okay, I'm going to need this soft uh, thing again. So we're going to just draw. I'm just going to do it freehand just to just to check it out. So if we go and just draw. Ooh, that one doesn't want to draw very well. We'll try this end. The other end was a little thin. So if we just go ahead and draw a feather. Hmm. Yeah, this one doesn't seem to draw as well. I'm not quite sure why. Ooh, it really doesn't draw very well at all. Let me try it with, I'm gonna, even though the pen is going to draw on there, I'm gonna try it with the pen because when I used to teach art at the art school, we used to use pens that, that pens were, um, that didn't have ink in them. And that was for the kids, it was the best thing. And actually they seem to work better because for some reason the embossing tool is a little bit scratchy. So let's just go ahead and use this pen. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw the lines. And also when you emboss, be sure to use a um, big stack of newspapers underneath so it's nice and soft, so you can get a little bit of texture on it. And uh, yeah, this works well. If you just have a pen that's run out of ink, it seems to be the best and this one's not too bad it does have ink but it's not a big deal kind of gives it a cool effect even with the ink and um, yeah we used to do a lot of cool stuff at the art school uh, I used to work at a, a local art school um, uh, teaching art to young kids and we did a lot of really cool projects like this so here we've we've got the embossed feather like that uh, Nick Sharon says, I wonder if you could rub that colored wax stuff on it to bring out the details. Yeah, that would actually be a great idea. And that's actually what we used to do in the art school is we, after we um, made the, the embossed item, like what usually they did like little animals or things like that. They used to uh, put uh, Indian ink on there. Uh, which is like a permanent black ink and then let it dry a minute and then uh, emboss it with a cloth and it was really cool so that's a fantastic idea Sharon that's I love that yeah and that's what I did in the robot DIY that I have uh, like I put up quite a long time ago on my channel uh, that's what we did on that so that would be super cool to do that 
So yeah, so here's the here's the feather. It's very very soft. So probably you want to would want to use maybe a slightly thicker metal. I know it comes in different uh, different thicknesses, and um, and you might even make it. You do this design to make like smaller ones because the bigger it gets, the more fragile it gets. And so what I want to do now is just to poke a hole. So maybe I'll just get a stack of fabric. I don't have a, I do have a hole punch upstairs, but I don't have one here. So we'll just try to poke a hole at the top. I'll be very careful because I don't want to break it or ruin it. So we just poked a little hole and then we'll just flatten it a little bit like that. Okay. And then we could put a little wire through there. So you could either put a jump ring or you can get a wire. Okay. And like I said, this is a little bit fragile, this design, but it's kind of fun. I think if there's a lot of potential here, and I'll be really curious to see what you guys make, you know, from, from these, uh, these ideas. So to put the, um, the feather on a, wire. I'm just going to do like a little circle like that and then bend it back. Okay. And we'll just put it right on there. Okay. We're just I'm not going to twist it around. I'm just going to put it in there like kind of free form. So there's the feather. Yeah. I think it, Sharon, it would look much better with some embossing, like a bit of a dark uh, ink on there or something. That would be really cool. So let's go ahead and put a couple of beads. So we're going to put a black one and I don't have any silver beads, but why don't we just go crazy and put a little gold one and then maybe a little hematite one at the top. And I'll just do a little loop at the top to finish it off. And just to represent that you could actually, these would make really nice earrings. They're a little bit, a uh, little bit big, but that's just the idea would be uh, good for earrings. And then we're going to look at everything that we made because we're already at um, 9.43. I'm just going to plug in my power bar because I don't want this to die in the middle of it. And drumroll, please. Let's see what we've made. <laughs> for some insurances, for some reason, that's reminding me of grape leaves and the tendrils. Okay, that's true, eh? Yeah, that's really cool. I have a design uh, way back in my feed for a little, uh, a little bunch of grapes as a um, wine glass holder, which are kind of cool. And uh, I think they have little tendrils, little spiral tendrils on them. So guys, let's see what we have. So we have this embossed feather that actually looks a little bit like a leaf as well. Some of these ones look a little bit like leaves. And then this is the embossed feather with the done with the aluminum tape. I'm really enjoying this one. And I think it's quite... Uh, it's quite re well enforced and I love this because it's got the wire down the middle, which is super cool. So I'm thinking this is one of my favorites. And then we have the very simple uh, feather earring with the bead at the top. Very, very simple. And then we have this one with the, it would be a pendant with like the little feathers hanging down. And I'm going to change those beads for the actual a photo because they don't look that nice at all, but that's all good. I'm going to experiment with the colors. And then this one was, was one of my favorites, which is this frayed fabric uh, feather. Say that fast three times. And so that one's super cool as well. So you guys can let me know in the comments which ones are your favorite. I like them all. I don't know. I can't, I can't decide. I, I mean, the simple one is nice too. These ones, you can use this concept of putting uh, two feathers together for earrings as well. And uh, yeah, so let me know. And if you guys are watching the replay, you can still comment below the video and let me know which is your favorite. Uh, give the video a big thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel for lots more DIY wire art and video, uh, uh, wire art and jewelry videos. I go live every Wednesday. Uh, usually, and if I'm changing the time, I will say in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. And yeah, please share photos of all your creations. I'm putting out a video uh, in the next week or so, another slideshow number two of the viewer's work. So I'm pretty excited about that. So if you guys want to get in some photos on the Facebook page of uh, pieces you've been making inspired by my videos, 
please do and I'll put them in the slideshow and uh, yeah thanks uh, thanks so much for hopping on Sharon wow time flies when we're with you oh you guys are so sweet thank you so much and uh, thanks for being in on the creative process because you, you guys really inspire me I just love it and I always come on with a sort of idea and some sketches and some materials and then just wing it and I love that it's just so much fun so we're just gonna we're gonna sign off I'm gonna open my software and stop recording and we'll see you guys next week